This is Space Cats Peace Turtles, the unofficial podcast for Fantasy Flight's Twilight Imperium. Episode 80, Expansion Wishlist, Part 1. Music by Ben Prunty, featuring Matt Martins and Hunter Donaldson. You know what's weird about this is that uh, I originally um, we were getting done with the tournament and I was like, once we're done, I want to have a beach episode. And yeah. what I meant by that was I want to have an episode where we just talk about whatever we want uh-huh. um, and don't really even have to think about and it. And don't really know. think about it. And it's just like fun. And it's funny that we're doing that, but it's technically an episode where we've been told literally by the community what we exactly have to talk to about. Do. Yeah. And we just spent an hour and a half prepping, like thinking about it. Before. We did everything but have a beach episode today. Yeah. But it feel, I feel as rejuvenated as a beach episode would have. Yeah, it feels. Uh, so this is the beach episode where <laughs> we're just at the beach, um, but it's going to be really, really fun. Because today we're going to just kind of play designer all day yeah, and yeah. talk about something I think we've been really hesitant to like want to theorize on or yeah. like even guess at or or like really just a topic that I feel like we've just kind of stayed away from really. Right, um, right. Because well, we're, a pod- two- we're a podcast about the actual game that exists in front of us. Right, yeah. Right. And it's the same reason we've somewhat avoided the homebrew mechanic topic for a long time right i mean i I won't say we've avoided the galactic council has also avoided it's been on like 10 votes and it always fails um but because just theorizing new stuff is kind of like what does that do for like the actual current state of the game very little Mm -hmm. um but this is a galactic council episode and the the votes were were quite unanimous uh that we needed we need to talk about our expansion wish list yeah there's no there's no, there's been no announcement we don't know of an expansion even if if we ever did know about an expansion you would probably see us avoiding talking about it because we would probably like if we knew about an expansion ahead of time we would be under nda so we could never tell you about it anyways so mm-hmm. get put that to rest we are not reporters that have like a scoop and that will, right. we never will be um so today we're, we're doing the same thing you all do which is we're just gonna like make them ups on what we think could be in a new expansion and not just what we could see but what we think would be the best version of what an expansion could look like yeah and i think originally you know it's, it's called an expansion wish list and i think when we started it kind of felt like when we started putting this episode together it kind of felt like a wish list yeah but it actually this episode is actually going to be more like me and matt are just going to pretend we're in the designing chair and yeah. like kind of making some calls that are kind of making vast. Some design choices. Yeah, like yeah. kind of kind of all over. Right. The, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason that it's going to it's going to sound like that. And it's because we could have just listed through all the stuff we want to see, but that would have been a 10 minute long episode. We want to see eight players, right? We want to see two more colors so that we can play with eight players, which means we also need more planet tiles. Uh, it'd be great to see some new action cards. Like we could just list through those things. But where does that get us? Who cares? We, that's that's not a discussion. But we started to hit on something that we think is more important uh, when we talk about why we would even have an expansion. Yeah. So to, to get even into that, I think we have to cover the base that to have an expansion means we are introducing optional rules into the game. And I don't mean a bunch of different optional rules. I mean the expansion is an option. Right. So you either have the expansion or you don't. So there are, there's lots of fears in the community that if we got an expansion, well, I just don't want it to, to like bisect the community of people who have and people who don't. And it's mm-hmm. like, that's going to happen no matter what. You cannot avoid that. If you release an expansion, some people have the expansion and some people don't. Right. So the expansion itself should maybe lean into that a little bit. It shouldn't try to pretend it like isn't adding new stuff that some people will play with and some people won't. Right. Um, so I think we were trying to come up with a bunch of different ideas of like what we thought it should look like, and we kept coming back and forth of like, okay, well, if it was, if it was completely reintroducing new ideas, it would look like this. But if it was just kind of like adding on to what we've already got, it would look like this. And it just felt silly to bounce back and forth. So kind of one of the other things to put to rest is the idea of 
rebalancing? Is the game going to get rebalanced? No, uh, is the I, game I, th- I, I think I, I, this is very much a called shot, but I'm just going to say, no, it's not going to, well, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, the only way that in the past, the only way that they've really made any adjustments to, to Twilight Imperium is by, by adding components, right. not taking what's already there and readjusting right. it. They will fix things that are fundamentally broken. Those will get changes mm-hmm. of a new a new card or whatever. Like in TI3, the first version of Imperial was basically broken. It made for a, a kind of boring game that, that had too much routine to it. Right. So in the first expansion, they released a new version that completely changed that. And the whole point was to replace it, and the game was better for it. But they didn't go in and retweak Muat's... Star- I mean, Muat wasn't there, but they didn't retweak Nalu's starting units, and they didn't change the starting tech for mm-hmm. this faction and mm-hmm. that. Fa- None of that stuff happens, because there's no... A, you'd have to print new faction sheets. There's just a lot of impractical things that happen when you're going to rebalance. And it's just that th- there aren't patch notes. That's not how this works. There's errata and there's FAQ, and that's the most you get for, like, patching the game. Right. But an expansion is here to introduce new stuff. Mm-hmm. And so there's also going to be a balance here of TI3 had a lot of stuff in it once you had both expansions. And there's a lot of stuff that could stand to be revisited. I think Dane and the other designers should have the freedom to be willing to reintroduce completely new stuff and not just be revisiting all the stuff from TI3 we haven't gotten yet, right? I don't I don't just want distant sons and leaders and mercenaries and all this stuff just plops back into the game. Right. A, they've already proven they're really good at redesigning old ideas. So like mm-hmm. tech and trade and agendas got pretty good overhauls right. in TI4. And so they should be allowed to do that. But I also just, I, I think it would be sad if the history of TI4 is that all they ever did was recreate and rebalance and fix things from TI3. Whereas, like, I would love to see completely new ideas brought to the table. You yeah. haven't seen that yet. I mean, we've seen adjustments to ideas, but we haven't seen them just completely from the ground up introduce a, a whole new mechanic to us or a whole new idea. Mm-hmm. So I want that to happen. But that's the kind of stuff that you and I can't really just, like, make up right we, we're not going to sit here and just make up all new mechanics that we think would be fun that's a homebrew episode and we're not right. doing that today right um, so i i want to talk about something before before we move on further i i want to talk about a, a choice that was made with ti4 that i think is really illuminating as far as like thinking about how this might go forward yeah. um and and it's basically a, a lot of it we are kind of already talking about but it's it's just this idea that TI4 came out and it wasn't a bunch of different ways to play, a bunch right. of different optional rule sets. It was essentially one rule set yes. for you to play with. Um, right. And I think when me and Matt started sitting down and just like thinking about, you know, anticipating like maybe maybe what choices would be made and trying to trying to come up with something like similar to something that would make sense uh, based off the kind of philosophy of ti4 i think that's something that 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 really excited us of this idea of like it's a new box with one new way to play like an elegant new way to play from top to bottom yes but it isn't a bunch of moving parts that you can just kind of tack on and, and 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 like it it is it is a there will be two ways to play basically right Right. At, at the at the end of an expansion and in, in our eyes obviously yeah because the the in theory the reason you got the expansion is because you want to play with all the new stuff which means you're going to play with all the new stuff and if you don't have the expansion you're just going to play the old way right. so be, we're leaning in again to that idea that the expansion means it's optional rules but we're going to make sure the expansion isn't a bunch of optional rules it is one new set and a new way to play mm-hmm. so to start digging into like all the stuff we'd like to see I think the first thing we have to cover is the number one most contentious mechanic that we think is maybe the most important one to reintroduce and, I, and I, reevaluate. I feel like it is kind of the pillar that we're going to kind of build a lot of the other stuff that we're going to talk about on, yeah. like the kind of core thing that would be in our in this imagined box that me and right. Matt are playing with, and it is. Right. So uh, it's it's the fourth X. It's we we are playing TI four and it's it's supposed to be a four X game and a four X game is explore, 
expand, exploit, and exterminate. And TI-4 has plenty of expanding, exploiting, and exterminating. But there's not an, a, a sense of exploration, of proper yeah. exploration. Mm-hmm. You just expand your borders in the early game. But there's no sense of thematic exploration. And while TI-4 has a lot of thematic elements, the most thematic from TI-3 was Distant Suns. We're going to keep using that term, Distant Suns, today. But... If you've never played TI3, don't worry about thinking about having to figure out what Distant Suns are because they probably need a whole new overhaul. Because in TI3, Distant Suns were straight up broken because it would be a token on a planet. When you invade that token or when you invade that planet for the first time, you flip the token and it's a random occurrence. Sometimes it's a bunch of trade goods. Sometimes it's like a new ship. Sometimes it opens up a supernova and the entire system and everything in it gets destroyed, which is way too high variance and made the game like really really imbalanced for those who got good luck on their distant suns draws and also the the thing i don't like about it is that it 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 didn't ha- it was just something you would find it was like an easter mm-hmm. egg it, it didn't it didn't create a choice or right. make you think as a player it was just a very basic kind of risk reward binary choice right. basically so when we talk about Distant Suns, what we really want to start talking about, and this has been like a lot of people have thought of different versions of this same idea, but for us, Distant Suns is some sort of event deck. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, almost think of, we, we want to introduce uh, FTL, Faster Than Light, the video game. It's like this small little tactical video game. Uh, we're introducing that into our Twilight Imperium because uh, FTL has a bunch of these little, every time you encounter a new space, you get a little mini event that you have some sort of choice to make and you don't know what's going to happen when you make that choice, but the game's going to be different for you on the other side of it. Right. So for us, we're, we want to lean into the idea of the planet traits. You've got cultural planets, industrial planets, and hazardous planets, and those have thematic implications. So it would be great if we had this distant suns, this event deck, that leaned into those things and so for us and again we're going to try to avoid just like straight up designing a whole game today but the theoretical space for distant suns would be you have three decks one for each planet trait and every time you invade a planet you flip over a card and reveal what's on the other side and it's it's for me it's it's something that isn't just either you get something or you have something taken away from you it's a push your luck element or or it's a you could pay this much and receive this much in return and Mm -hmm. if that seems like a good trade for you then you'll do it otherwise you can completely ignore it and you could just you could play and expand as you always normally would and completely ignore the exploration side of it because a lot of people just want to be able to still do that but it gives you this other kind of currency and it makes taking planets a part of the currency of the game Um, and it would shake up a lot of the game too right i mean it would it would it would change TI4 base game is very, very stable in just, like, how the math works out and, like, what happens. And I don't think it's getting dry, but we're definitely getting used to how the game plays. And it would be great to have completely new things shake up every single game, but not in a negative way where it's like, oh, well, you you flipped over the wrong card and now your whole game is ruined. Yeah. We want to avoid that. I want to talk more about, like, what what exactly would be on these cards because Mm -hmm. I feel like what I see kind of in my head is the cards present you with a series with, with well i think that there will be a lot of different types of cards i actually i want to cover a really basic one that i think would be super fun is um let's say you land on a cultural planet um and you draw a card and the card says you have discovered an artifact place an artifact and gain a victory point whenever you control this artifact so i think i think that's one that would be right. pretty simple and that artifact uh, just stays with that planet. Right. And so that's how we get artifacts back into the game. Um, right. Because I always thought, it, like, it, it would be fun if they were uh, truly truly random instead of, like, kind of a weird... I, again, I, I think me and Matt are less interested in go here and flip something over than we are in, okay, well, I know that cultural planets can sometimes have artifacts on yes. them. Right. And so and so as a cultural planet over there, I'm going to go fly over there, take their cultural. And that's something actually we should say. You don't draw a distant sun card just when you take the planet for the first time. You draw right. a distant sun card every time you do it. Right. So that's with- a sad part of old distant suns is it was just the first time, and so it's like okay, so by the mid game, distant suns is no longer a thing that happens. Right. So I think we want a, a system that takes place over the entire duration of the game. Every time you take a planet, you're going to flip a card, but it's not going to be wildly imbalanced but it's also going to be thematic. So yeah. when you take a hazardous planet, you can expect to maybe be incurring some kind of big cost. You took a hazardous risk, but it will be worth a high reward. 
Yeah, I would imagine it would work sort of like if not to drive too much on the FTL comparison, because I think if you haven't played that game, maybe this won't be useful for you at all. Yeah, but in right. FTL, there are cir- like, let's talk about hazardous planets then. So there are circumstances in FTL where you come to uh, planets that are kind of scary and it's like, oh, well, um, do you want to send so-and-so to maybe go um, investigate? And you send them and maybe they die, but like you find something as well. So I'd right. imagine that's sort of how hazardous planets would work, where you are you are basically asked to make a choice um, to sacrifice probably some of your plastic in exchange yeah. for what is probably a known reward, right, basically. Right. Some trade good gain or even like a tech or whatever. Any it could be anything and it and it varies card to card. Mm-hmm. So the whole idea within that is you would have a decent amount of these trait cards, right? I, I don't know the, the the perfect number. That's where designing the game actually comes into place. But I want you to imagine something like 20 cards per deck. So mm-hmm. 60 cards, you know, so that lots of variants. You're always reshuffling, like you're getting new things and it's it's burning through the deck. But you're, you're, you're always experiencing something new when you take a planet. Mm-hmm. I think that's important. So, so this is the bedrock of our expansion idea which is to say we we want to make sure this fourth x is in the game and everything else comes from that because we want this expansion to be holistic we want it to be a core design idea that applies to everything i think it is a mistake for people to just say oh let's add in an eight let's let's add in all these things and that feels great that doesn't excite new players right to, to get the game a, 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 an expansion needs to have a hook that makes everybody want it not just the people who are really diehard and play it a lot and want some new stuff. People who play Twilight Imperium once every year or twice a year, they're not going to care about the expansion if all it is is some new action cards. They don't play enough to go to get that cost. But if it adds this whole new mechanic and it is a part of everything you do in that, well, that's a whole new game, and they might be very interested in that game and want to get that game in addition to their TI4 base game. Right, right. So let's get into some more of the nitty gritty then. Uh, but we're kind of we're, we're, you're going to hear us refer back to this distant suns idea a lot because for us it's again it's that bedrock and it's everything should fall in line with this idea. Now we might contradict ourselves. There might be some things that are just kind of like, well, yeah, let's toss that in too. But I think generally speaking, we want all this stuff to to flow together. And the first thing then is well, we want more planet tiles. Uh, we've got we've got a decent amount, but it would be great to get more. Mm-hmm. Um, this is where I have a weird hang up. This is where I talk about that. I, I want the designers to be able to make completely new stuff. There's a lot of planets we're lacking from right. TI3. Right. And and I want to see a bunch of those come back. But I also don't want the designers to feel like they have to just only ever bring back old mechanics. I just think that's boring for them. I feel I feel sorry for the designers only ever getting to design stuff that's already been designed before. Um, right. That being said, I want to see Hope's End. I want to see planets like Evera and Cormund, which were planets that are inside a nebula and inside a gravity rift. There's these right. cool thematic planets that we don't have anything like that in the base game. The base game gave us a decently balanced array of planets and I want now all the planets to add way more theme to it. Now we're already getting a good amount of theme because we're doing this Distant Suns, but but there's a bunch of planets that I, I just want to see brought back because they, they add this new kind of like thematic approach to the game. I want to talk about three planet systems because I, <laughs> I, I like I like three planet systems. Uh, I think they're really fun because they're, they're just systems that can get real sloppy. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's it's already fun when you've just got, like, all the different, you know, you've got people uh, sharing systems uh, either because they were willing to or because they weren't willing to. And I think right. uh, I, I just I think three planet systems are fun. And I don't even necessarily think it necessarily needs to be the three planet systems that were in TI3. I just think right. it would be fun to see one. Some more. Um, yeah. 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 So just imagine the Hakan homeworld, but systems that anybody can take mm-hmm. um in ti3 there were these things called trade stations it was kind of a weak mechanic it didn't re- there were there were things called refresh abilities that didn't they weren't especially enticing depending on the planet you were on um but the idea of trade stations is intriguing which is it's not a planet you can take it's a trade station where if you control the space you control the, sp- the trade station and even within that i don't care about that so much but i do think there's room for some completely new design around the idea of a trade station yeah right i mean i mean the the base imagination is like what if it's it's not a planet card but it's this other card that 
you can exhaust it to flip to, to replenish your commodities at any time rather than being I, I, locked into trade i like that ability for it uh but i'm i'm gonna put a little a, a little pin on it and say that i would like to see trade stations as a discoverable distant suns card a yeah, yeah. oh I I, a, I I yeah i i landed on an industrial planet and then uh, I found a trade station. Something that, because my idea with the Distant Suns cards could be that they could make planets that in most games of TI are not very desirable nor important. It mm -hmm. could give them that extra boon randomly in the right. RNG where like, wow, it just turns out Thibba was the planet right. this, this game right. that just happened well, to be the thing. Yeah, and that gets at a completely other idea too, which is just that like, Right now, the game is very objective focused, and if you want to win, you need to play with the objectives in mind. And that is that's great, and that's a smart way to play. I just would love it if the game had more ways to entice me into other decisions. I want mm -hmm. I want new objectives that don't get me points, but just like ah, oh, I need Thibba because now Thibba has this ridiculous thing on it that I need to go get. It has this new kind of resource that I want to go get because whoever uncovered Thibba uncovered this you know distant suns card that has this crazy ability and i want that ability so i need to go take thibba which otherwise would have never been an important planet to me right um i think that was the idea behind all of the tech specialties uh and traits and having those attached to objectives um but i think as we've seen ti4 play out we've seen that those are kind of the weakest objectives tech specialties or having four planets of the same trait having three tech specialties those were sort of the replacement of artifacts and i kind of would like to see it go back the other way because i think a lot of players can agree that those aren't the most fun they feel really luck dependent sometimes mm -hmm. you draw the secret objective have control four hazardous planets and sometimes it's the easiest thing in the world and sometimes it's crazy difficult uh and i just i would i don't know there's a part of me that wants to see that stuff reevaluated. Um, and and that now planets are just getting you new abilities that you can use and new ways to get points rather than being specifically the points unless it's specifically an artifact token or whatever. Like I just think there could be more variance in how you think about planets and reasons why you want to take specific planets. Yeah, yeah, and I th I think that's where the Distant Suns deck can be really fun. Is it's giving you. A, a very solid reason to take like like i was talking about a situation earlier before we started recording matt that i think is interesting um when a player decides to take a planet from another player um if they are there's really only two reasons they can do it to where it doesn't seem stupid they they do it because it's getting them a control objective or right. because it's blocking another player from getting a victory point. If it's basically outside of those two reasons, it always kind of feels like, uh, what are you doing, you know? Right. right. But right. Distant Suns could give you a reason to do that, to to right. essentially, to, to be aggressive, not in a way that is predictable, but in a way that is like, well, and also think about it this way. Um, if If you're in dire straits, and we're throwing in this this the, I I realize some people might be groaning because it sounds like we're just adding more random number generator RNG randomness right. to the but game. But it shouldn't be that. It, it's not. What 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 I'm trying to say is that what it is is a a a somewhat known gamble that you're taking. Mm -hmm. Like right. like how like basically similar to the way that you sometimes decide to just spend a command token and strategy to do the secondary of politics just to draw more action cards you know you right. might get something good and you're just going for it that this would be you're attacking another player knowing that you might get something good out of it right basically yeah, agreed I, I think a really way good way to like showcase what you're talking about is in ti3 there was a planet called hope's end Mm -hmm. Hope's End has been a thematic planet since, like, I think Twilight Imperium 1st Edition. It was an expansion that came out that was just called Hope's End. It may have been 2nd Edition. I'm, I, I don't quite remember exactly. But there was an expansion that came out that was, like, all about Hope's End. Mm -hmm. um, and in TI3, Hope's End had a refresh ability. I won't get into the specifics of that. But it allowed you to generate shock troopers, which were these really, really amazing ground forces. Um, so there was 
certainly a world where sometimes people just wanted to take hope's end from somebody else because they wanted to for two rounds generate a few shock troopers so that then they could go take mecha tall racks right little things like that and and that's sort of what we're getting at is if distant suns were incorporating more and more ideas like that you would your your goal is to score the point but to get to that point, I need to go take this type of planet because I know that this type of planet usually nets me this kind of benefit. Right. Eight resources is an objective on the board. I know that cultural planets often grant me trade goods as yep. a reward yep. for some sort of cost. So I'm going to go take some cultural planets because maybe, just maybe, I'll get lucky and they'll get me the resources I need. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get the resources. Things like that. Yeah. And the other thing, too, that I think makes me feel more confident in this idea of leaning so much on the distant suns on on various planets and organized by planet trait is that we have seen our knowledge of the action card deck evolve to such an extent that we and i mean it, it almost feels like duh to say it but like we we know what to expect in the deck and there are there are times when you anticipate a card being used in a very specific situation right. i'm thinking about a card like public disgrace right. um and I think adding more um, more of that to the game, like, well, I always know that there is an artifact on one of these cultural planets. At some right. point in this game, we will likely see that. If, like, the deck is big enough to where, essentially, you might see every card, but that's, like, a little bit of a stretch. So there's a chance uh -huh. it might not come up, but there's also yeah. a pretty good chance it will come out at some point. I, I like that. I, and I yeah. think I think well, more of that is, like, it's like a randomness that has a logic to it, that it is right. a little bit predictable. And it also leans into the philosophy of TI, which is that TI is for totally new players and people that don't get to play very often, and it's for the super experience. Yeah. The people who are super experienced can lean into that, like, I know what I can kind of expect, and I've seen this many trait yes, cards already yes. get pulled, so I know what I'm going to get. But for a new player... Pull it, just flipping over a trait card that I've never seen before is equally fun. It's just like, oh my gosh, these crazy things are going to happen, and I'm going to get to experience this highly, highly thematic game. That's true too. Like, yeah, it's like if you don't know the if you don't know the deck, then it's just going to be. And I mean, what what we're we are kind of holding fast to the idea that like I don't think it's fun to flip over a card and find out, oh, you really messed up in this six right. hour board game. That's right. just not fun. But exactly. But like, if you want to, if you want to ask me to make a dark contract or like <laughs> exactly, sacrifice right. my own men in order right. for to do one thing, like I'm into that. Like exactly. But but don't don't just make me lose because I did the thing that made sense to me. Like don't right. don't spawn a supernova just because I activated the planet next to my home system and now my whole game is destroyed and I have to play for five more hours because of social right. contract. Right. You exactly. Know? That was the whole problem before. The, the the other problem that I think that could come up with new planet trait, with, with new planet tiles, is adding more planets throws off the, the numbers a little bit. Now, I've had this discussion multiple times, and I know uh, Milty, uh, he's, he's a galactic counselor, and he's on our Discord really often. Um, Milty is a mathematician or something. He's some genius that always is able to just <laughs> throw numbers at us, and it's like, oh, I, I just have to assume you're right because you threw so many numbers at me so fast that I can't keep up. But he assures me that you won't have a, a trait, a planet trait problem, but let me describe what I think the planet trait problem could be, uh, which is if you add a bunch of new tiles, right now the amount of tiles we have is like the perfect amount you need for the number of players that could play a game, right? right. With six players, two tiles get left out. With five players, one tile gets left out. With four players, you use every single tile in the game if you're playing like with normal maps. So we are at our limit with our tiles. If we add 20 new tiles, now every time we deal out three blue tiles and two reds to everyone 20 tiles are not getting included into the game right if 20 if those 20 tiles just by chance are all the hazardous planets and now on our map there's only two hazardous planets on the whole map we have a broken game because we have an objective that says you need to control four planets of the same trait right this is a it's a low likelihood to happen but the point is if it's a non-zero chance, it shouldn't be a thing because you shouldn't have a situation where an objective is unscorable. That's just not that's not cool. Um, so to to counteract all that, I mean, maybe there's like a perfect number of how you distribute those traits. But what I think is more important is maybe looking into some of the objectives 
and reevaluating how those are are done mm -hmm. uh, because i think the main issue you have is those have four of the same trait or three of the same tech specialty and if we want to add more planets i want to fix that problem this also doesn't get across the problem of in ti3 we had to force in our wormholes because we had too many tiles and you had plenty of games if you just drew randomly you just wouldn't have wormholes right and that makes the map feel weird and isn't as fun so we always forced in lodor quan and the empty alpha and beta and then we drew, dealt the rest of the tiles so that we definitely had four total wormholes you're still going to have that issue probably it'd be great if there was a design way to counteract that i don't know but let's get at let's start talking about objectives yeah and what what i think could maybe happen uh, in TI3, I forget which expansion it was. I assume it's the first expansion, Shattered Empire. Uh, we got a whole new objective set of 10 cards. So it replaced the old set. You couldn't, you weren't supposed to play with both sets at once. And a lot of people did, probably because they just like look, gl glazed over the, the spot, the one sentence in the rule book that said don't play with both or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the, the two objective decks didn't make sense to play together because there were some overlaps. They recreated some objectives and put them into the new one, and so it, right. it, it threw off the balance. So for me, I think it's important to, if we're, if we're going to introduce this expansion and have all these new rules, we need to reevaluate some of the old rules and see if they apply to our new expansion. So if we've added this new cost to all of our planets, I think it is a worthwhile investment to throw out, have four of the same trait, collect four hazardous planets, control four industrial planets, have five tech specialties of the same, or, you know, have five tech specialties. I think all of those objectives can go. Yeah. Um, and if you completely replace both of the public objective decks with new stuff that also leans into your distant suns mechanics, I feel like that's a better approach. Yeah. than just, than just adding new objectives to the deck already. Mm -hmm. This one, this is hard. Um, this is hard. Yeah, this this is the, the this is one of the calls that's really hard to make um, because there are a lot of objective cards that are probably going to work for whatever they decide to do and what works now. Um, I think having a new objective deck is a very clean way to do it, and I also think it kind of goes with our theme of like this should kind of be a top to bottom yep. whole new way to play that that is kind of self contained. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea of there being all new public objectives, uh, I think, sounds fantastic. Now, it could even be, it could be something as simple as a note saying, "Well, you can't. Th these objectives are not um, right. like applicable to the new expansion. Right? D like, don't use those. Use that. These just overcomplicates instead. it. Is the problem? It is That's easier true. to say out with the old, in with the new, and mm -hmm. just be done with it. Yeah. Um, I think secret objectives makes that more difficult because I don't think we can replace all the secret objectives. I think most of the secret objectives need to stay. Right, so but the secret that, objectives logic, are the ones... Maybe you have to keep the tech and the planet trait secret objectives. I don't know. Yeah. I, I still think they're kind of wildly imbalanced, but if you add even more secret objectives, it's even less of a chance that you're going to get one of those planet trait ones that's hard for you to do. I don't right, know. that's true. That's true. Um. Do we want to talk about? So you you had an interesting idea that I actually don't I don't even really know how far. This to is one go of those things this. that isn't a part of our holistic approach. Yeah. This so our, so we, we so have we this ha holistic expansion, and then I wrote down faction objectives. Yeah. And what does that mean, <laughs> Matt? Like, what I is that? I don't know. I just do want that? it so bad. Here's here's what all this comes down to. For me, mm -hmm. my expansion wish list, uh, wish list is as many thematic things as you can fit into the game. I mm -hmm. just I just don't care about perfect. Uh, faction balance and I don't care about like a faster game I just want a game that is as thematic as you, you can possibly make it okay and to me something that would be really thematic is if at the start of the game I had th three different possible faction objectives and I draw one of them or whatever it's like a new kind of secret objective maybe or or I don't know it, there's a there's a million different ways you could do this objective but I would love it where the factions that are in the game dictate some new objectives that are introduced into the game so yeah. if I'm Joel Nar, there's some tech heavy objective that is introduced and and this all of these things can then play into like our rebalancing idea right if there's if joel nar introduces an objective that is some sort of te a tech control objective joel nar now has this weird incentive to not do all the ridiculous wheeling and dealing they do with their promissory note because mm -hmm. 
if there's an objective that everybody could score that is based off of their ability of having more tech than everybody else and they go around handing out tech to everybody that's a point that they're handing over to people it's not just tech they're giving over it's it's an actual point that is definitely in the game that's the sort of stuff i'm thinking of that is just like thematic elements that the six factions in your game slightly shift the type of game you're going to have outside of just themselves being present it's like Barony's there, so there's some weird capital ships objective, mm-hmm. and Sardak Nor is there, so there's like this combat objective that is present. Little things like that. I just, I just really want more thematic stuff, and I think faction objectives is a way to maybe get at that. I don't know. I, just, I just throwing ideas out. I'll, I'll, I'll throw something in to do with faction objectives that I think could be a little bit different. What if faction objectives were sort of like training wheels a little bit? Yeah. Uh, in that they're sort of like to re- to replace the point of preliminary objectives, where yes. your faction objectives, um, like for a new player, would just be a card that essentially says, hey, if you play this faction the way it's meant to be played, you get a right. point. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like exactly. just to kind of like, you've got all the rules in front of you, and now it's literally like, if you do the thing that they're good at, right. you get a point. Um, yeah. I, I like the idea of something like that. I don't know how much I like the idea of the factions are like dictating a public objective that Maybe everyone not. can yeah. score. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's that sounds a little bit wild. Unless that was the entire design of the mm-hmm. new public objectives. Right. You know what I mean? Like they're all based off the factions in the game or something. I, I yeah, I could see something like that uh, making right. a lot of sense. Where it's like depending on what factions are available, here are the that's how you build the public objective right. deck basically yeah, that could be cool yeah um, I, I think the general idea though is 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 exactly what you were getting at which is just like get people to lean into the thematics of their faction even more mm-hmm. i just i always encourage anything that's like that so it doesn't even have to be faction objectives but if there's new stuff that leans into the styles of each faction i'm i'm all in favor for it right um, are we are we ready to move on to the to the next thing? The next thing I feel like is just as wild as the thing we just talked about. It is, and, and I want I think there's a good transition here, which is to say, all of these, everything you know about TI four, is based on the economy set aside by the strategy cards. Mm-hmm. The the eight strategy cards that exist in the game really dictate just how much things cost and when things happen and how right. often they happen. Right. And if we're going to completely have this holistic expansion where we're revisiting everything, I don't think they should... People talk about Diplo being not very good and it needs a replacement. Well, I think it's really boring to just add a new Diplo. Right. It, and, and it seems like something that the designers wouldn't want to do anyways. They'll just kind of like admit defeat of like, oh yeah, Diplo was bad. Here's a better Diplo. Blop, blop. See you later. What I think is better is the same thing we're doing with the objectives start from scratch and completely rework all of the strategy cards and introduce a new set they did it in ti3 we had white uh strategy cards that were a full new set um but i think that this set and this is maybe my personal thing i don't know if hunter you agree but i think this set should have nine strategy cards yeah that's that's, i I, i'm bummed that you that you're leading with that because i don't really even know what we mean by that but Nine, nine would be a good solution for when there are eight players. You know how much we just hate when all the cards get picked, right? Right. Right. Um, and but I it's think not just us. Lots of people hate that. That right. is most people's least favorite part of a four-player game, and most people's least favorite part of an eight-player game. Right. Um, so if there was a ninth card, that essentially would never ever happen, uh, even with what was presumably what yeah. will pre- presumably be the new player count, which will be nine. And the uh, problem I always have with people introducing a ninth strategy card is they're just tacking it on to the eight we already have. Right. But what a perfect opportunity to introduce a ninth strategy card to a full strategy card redesign where it's from the get-go, the point is to play with all nine rather yeah. than just like, oh yeah, and then here's number nine or like here's number zero. I don't know. It's like, let's just tack it on to either end or something. I would much rather, if we're going to do a full strategy card redesign, it's it's the best timing to do it. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's it is fine if four and eight player games draw all of them. But for me personally, I would love it more. And if I'm adding it to my wish list, I would love it to be nine balanced strategy cards that all play against each other. Yeah, uh, I I'll say that I feel 
way less strongly about this than you do. Mm -hmm. I feel almost nothing about this. And I think the reason I feel nothing about it is because I feel like even we've got eight strategy cards already and people aren't even really happy with all of those. So yeah. like, I think it might be a lot to expect that, that we're going to be able to come up with not we obviously, cause we're not going to be working on it, but that, that they are <laughs> going to be able to come up with eight new baller, right. Hit it out of the park strategy cards. And also a ninth one. Right. Um, yeah. Just because it's, it's, you know, at least with eight, they kind of have a structure to drop on. But what I what I kind of wanted to lead with this is again, like every new point we've kind of added um, to this. Uh, I think the strategy cards are not all of them, but but at least one of them would relate to this yes. like distant suns. Right. Uh, what if it was the ninth one? aspect Ooh. of the? Yeah, sure. I guess it could so, be. But, but no, um, you're, you're right though. You're right. But there's obviously like a lot of strategy cards that were in TI3 that did things that we have that we don't even have as an option anymore um yep. in in TI4. Um and I generally really like the strategy cards in TI4. I think it is the best set yet actually. We've had, yeah. Um sure. so I mean this is this is one where I can kind of take it or leave it. Um yeah. but I do think that there are some interesting changes you can make to the strategy cards. Um things that 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 could change the entire economy of things like command counters changing the price of command counters changing how right. you get them um one card that i want to call out that i always really enjoyed um was actually the the um original number one card from ti3 yes. the initiative, initiative card yeah um it would give you the speaker token which i did not like that part because it was like part of the problem of the original cards was that initiative was always uh, first pick or uh, Imperial was always first pick and then initiative and the right. speaker token just moved in. It was very boring. But what I liked about it is that it was a card that just allowed you to do all of the secondaries for free without spending yeah. anything. Um, I, I kind of just like the simplicity of that, of just like, mm -hmm. all right, well, it, cause it's, cause it's like, okay, let me, let me make, let me make my real point here towards the end of the game taking a high initiative number becomes like kind of more important than yeah. uh what it does right so i think uh i think the idea of there being a card that early on you want to take the initiative card because oh depending on what other people take you're going to get to do a lot of secondaries and it's probably yep. going to be pretty good for you but then towards the end it is like you're taking that card just for the high right. initiative, right. which I kind of feel like should be a built-in part of the game. Right. They should be more powerful as they get higher in value. Right. Because in that last round, the number eight... I mean, it, it is the case with Imperial right now, but tech doesn't feel up to snuff in that in the final round of TI, mm -hmm. right? Like, Diplomacy certainly feels like basically the best card to have in the last round. Right, because it does something really good and is also high initiative. Right, and I kind of feel like that's kind of how I want the balance to go. Is that like the 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 higher initiative cards are the ones that are like really good early game mm -hmm. and not so good late game, right? And then kind of vice versa for the ones later down. So like for yeah. me, I've always been kind of and and I realize this is a lot trickier than I'm making it sound because the reason I think that tech is like number seven is because if it wasn't, then you could just always block people out of tech. And I don't have an answer for that criticism. I just yeah. kind of wish that tech was a little higher up because of that problem of right. like, tech is not very not very important the later into the game that you are, and it's also a low initiative. So there's not really, there's not a yin and yang to that. You know what right. I mean? Like it, right. it's kind right. of all together. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the thing that you pointed out too about the economies is something I just would love to see in general for the game is I'd mm -hmm. love to see the numbers that we're all used to getting shaken up and and also for this to lean into this whole expansion this distant suns expansion if let's take leadership as the best example right how do we get command counters in TI3 it went from three influence per encounter for per command counter to two influence per command counter and mm -hmm. command counters became way easier to get and I would love it 
not just because I'm like lazy and want to have more command counters, but if we have a game that encourages you to take planets for reasons outside of objectives, well, then you should have more command counters to do that with so that you can actually take those risks and jump on those things. So I would love to see things like that. See, see command counters get a little bit cheaper so that everyone has more of them, but they're spending them on more things. Right. Just an understand, like, I, I think making an assumption about like how it i guess i the only thing i really want to express is that i would like to see new strategy cards so that we could completely change that economy um not in a like just in a like new type of game experience economy not necessarily it's not like i think the economy of ti4 is very uh very good and and it's 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 not bad there's nothing wrong with it it doesn't need to be fixed right it's more like let's see a different take basically yeah yeah i don't think there's anything wrong with an expansion an expansion shaking things up yeah if you're already shaking up a lot of things there's no reason not to just kind of change change things up and and see where it all falls in line the the only bummer in all of this is that i think that trade from right the, how do you change trade <laughs> i don't ever want it to change i am well, in love with but, how it but works yeah to that same idea mm-hmm. there are ways it could be improved upon just in terms of game flow how how awkward is it is the kind whole, of awkward like, you right. can replenish people for free that's a very awkward thing especially for newer play- players to like really grasp like how those timing windows work so if there's a way to keep trade great but simplify that whole process i'm all down for a new sort of trade card that's a good Um, point actually it is it is while i think it's perfect once you do it right it is it is kind of hard to understand exactly how it is meant to be played so i will give you that It, it could be it could be um the language could be simplified um yeah but yeah i mean and also i mean there's so many cards that i feel like could be i feel like construction could use um some more revamp just yeah. just a revamp i just think it's there's nothing wrong with shaking up construction i don't think construction is bad but it's not a top picked card so i would just love to see it kind of turned on its head a little bit yeah uh, and, and if there's if there's mechanics introduced that make construction you know what if there's we haven't t- started talking about like new units yet but if there were more structures and you had to kind of incorporate that into a new construction card that there's a new type of structure so that has to be accounted for then it makes a lot of sense to have a reprint of all new things right if there's a third type of structure our current construction card only says build pds or build space stock if mm-hmm. we get a third structure we have to have a new construction card we just do right and so what a perfect opportunity to sort of kind of rebalance it see what else you can do with it right right i agree with that um I don't know. Is there like I, I think other uh, good like old TI three cards to call out um, bureaucracy assembly those right. type cards kind of changing the way that that politics um, works. But in like I I I'm kind of more in favor of the light changes versus the political intrigue changes where yeah you kind of t- change the agenda phase into an all new game. Right. Um, but the idea you know I I always liked the potential of. Um, I believe it was assembly that would be the card that would allow you to basically kind of propose a yeah. specific agenda that yeah. you had in your hand right. be the agenda. Right. Um, but however, like it didn't really work in TI3 because the agenda deck was so bloated that right. you never really, you, you never very had rarely <laughs> had an agenda that would be very fun to like get, you know, on the floor. Right. But, right. um, I do think that with the current agenda deck, even for TI4, with the even without adding anything to it, if you tried to play with that um, that rule set, I think it would be a lot more fun. Just because oh, we've got a lot better um, we've got a lot better cards available. Yeah. I realize you might be kind of frustrated with us right now because we've been kind of vague. We're not being super specific. It's not like we're saying like yeah. oh, like there's a new set of strategy cards and it's like this one this one this one we're just like yeah. kind of being like oh it'd be cool if it was like this and i'm not gonna be too specific um i'm kind of in the mood in general um it's been a long time since i've said on this show that we that we've painted with a wide brush but we we have definitely <laughs> thus far painted with a very wide brush <laughs> we did that today <laughs> what i would like uh and but i think you get kind of a general idea of what we mean we're we're talking about 
a holistic expansion based with around distant suns as being like a primary new module of the game basically and it it doesn't work the old way it works this kind of new way and takes a lot of uh hints from ftl um and is kind of a new rng that you can kind of count on that you can kind of bring into your game for new players it's a thematic new experience for old vets it it is a new calculus for taking planets from each other right and we've been very vague um i realize that um I'm looking for you all to just blow us up with errata right now um, <laughs> because we we actually don't have time to do a big two-hour blowout this week. And also, right. this is supposed to be the beach episode, so it's not supposed to be crazy. Yeah, um, give us a break. <laughs> so we, we actually have a lot of uh, other ideas that we're going to talk about, including one that Matt doesn't even want to talk about, and we might not even go there. <laughs> um, but I think... I think you guys have enough right now to um, either, I mean, do several things. Uh, you may let us know if you like the idea. Let us uh, what what we've got so far. Um, maybe maybe take what we're talking about and like flesh it out even more. Get more specific. Um, maybe you hate it and let us know. Uh, I feel like we haven't had an episode in a while because of the nature of the tournament arc. There was a lot of kind of journalistic episodes where we were just telling you something. There was nothing to errata. Uh, blow us up. Do it. Yep. yep. I want I want it. Bring I it miss on. that part of the show. And I think next week's episode will be very much about um, errata. And let us know if you think, even just like, if you think this is a likely direction that we might see them right. go. Even if you're like, I, well, just, I, I, I don't think I this is what they'll do. I want to hear some people's just kind of like add-on ideas. But I would love to hear some completely different takes, right? Yeah. If you if you also have this like huge branching version of what an expansion should look like, I want I want to know about that too, and I want to try to try to break it down for everybody else. Yeah. Um. And there there will be a lot more next week. I expect we'll be talking about these ideas uh, that we we even just got out there. I mean, all we covered today was like distant suns, some planet tiles. We talked about objectives and strategy cards. I feel like those are really important to it yeah. to an expansion we have other things we want to talk about that are like a little more you know just kind of nitty-gritty whatever Specific stuff and nuanced yeah. um but but yeah uh let us know what you think and also be sure to rate us on your podcast app of choice <laughs> especially apple podcast slash itunes please hit us up on tweeter space ca- at space cats pod for game updates and announcements uh, I've been meaning to use my Twitter again. I'm at Hunbunsun. I still haven't decided to post anything new on it, but maybe <laughs> if you follow me, that will give me the motivation. Who knows? Uh, you can check us out on Facebook at Space Cats Peace Turtles, uh, and we do announcements there. You can. That's a good place if you just want to ask us like a rules question. And by us, I mean Matt. Um, <laughs> you can check out the subreddit Twilight Imperium for our weekly posts and discussion. Um, that's a good way to get, you know, if you have responses to this episode and you're not like, you know, somebody on our Discord, maybe you're not comfortable on the Discord, you don't know yeah. anybody there, if there's pressure, just pop on the Reddit and, and shoot us a message. We always like seeing new people that right. are finding this game and finding this show and talking about how dumb we are and how much they our ideas suck and they figured <laughs> it out. I, 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 I love it. Um, check out our Pat Rion. Uh, for, you know, actually, wh- I, I feel like we probably need to have a new episode of just talking about, like, what the direction of on. that is now, um, yeah. because it's obviously been very tournament-focused. Um, right. We are kind well, of we're, in... We're maybe shaking it up. I yeah. Mean, I don't know. There's maybe some shake-ups coming up soon. Right, so... being over. We... we we want to say that uh you know we're kind of in an in-between phase right now which is why we're kind of doing fun goofy episodes like this um but they're the, you know us there is always um a new direction that we're going to be taking things uh so yeah. be looking forward to uh, a shaking up of the the patreon um but yeah i mean as of now check out like a, hopefully all of the tiers are going to be getting a lot more attention this was a galactic council episode yeah um we have a stream every month is the goal that the Steve Martin fan club uh, takes care of. We we play uh, games with our Goodian Brotherhood uh, 
uh, donators and uh, Space Kitties get um, their own episode, essentially. Yeah. They are I co-producers of the show. I think next week is a Space Kitty episode, hopefully. Hopefully everything works out where next week is a Space Kitty episode. So Right, right. Well, actually, next well, week. Well, no, not next week, but we'll be re- we're, we're also recording, regardless, upcoming. We'll do yes. this thing next week, and then the week after that is probably a Space Kitty. Yes, and there's a very strange Space Kitty episode coming up from uh, Yin for Life, uh, which I don't oh, even really want to spoil for you, but it's going to be very strange. Um, <laughs> check out our Discord for Funk Camp Conversations, and you can get some of your Patreon benefits there. Uh, also, I am a comedian, and you can check me out um, at my weekly show, Earthquake Hurricane, every Thursday, 8 p.m. at Ford Food and Drink. Uh, in Portland, Oregon. In Portland, Oregon, if, if that's where you live or if you're near there or if you're visiting there, which is something that happens. Um, another show I want to tell you about is on May 11th. Uh, it's called Comedy Bender. Um, that show will happen at noon at the Lamp, which is the bar attached to the Aladdin Theater in Portland, Oregon. I will be co-hosting that show um, with my friend Stephen Wilbur, who uh, is a very funny, uh, kind of nerdy, adjacent comic, uh, who you might see on this show at some point. Not that he knows Ooh. anything about Twilight Imperium at all. He does not. Um, I want to thank some Space Kitties. Kraken, T.G. Welch, Yin for Life, Patience is a Virtue, Dursta, Naderade, and Jimbov. Yeah. I got a quick uh, play of the week, and this one's from Yin for Life, one of our yeah. space kitties. So so it's, it's a pretty brief one, so just hang in tight. Mentak uses flank speed to move three Cruiser 2s four away to Mehar Zul. Necro has a single dreadnought in orbit and one infantry on the planet. Mentak fires ambush but misses. In combat, Necro gets a hit and Mentak scores two, killing the dreadnought. Mentak uses salvage operations and two trade goods to build a dreadnought. Mentak uses bombardment to kill the infantry, scoring make an example of their world secret objective. Next turn, Necro retaliates, sending in their flagship, a carrier and seven infantry. Mentek fires ambush and misses again. Necro rolls all their dice, no hits. Mentek rolls two hits. This continues back and forth until Mentek somehow kills all but one infantry and the flagship, and this flagship was sustained. Necro declares a retreat. Mentak plays an intercept. No hits on either side. Last round, Mentak hits twice. The flagship and infantry are deci- destroyed. Mentak then reveals the secret objective to destroy a flagship. When Mentak had hoped to only get a single point for controlling four planets of the same trait, turned into a three-point swing that put them back in the pack to eventually take the win with a ten trade goods spending objective. Wow. That's a play that that's one of those play of the weeks that's like, oh that just happened to you, huh? That's cool. <laughs> that's insane. That doesn't even make <laughs> sense. That I, I uh, th- this one this one really hurts me because I really sympathize <laughs> with the Necro player because uh, the Necro flagship is my favorite ship. Yeah, and right. what to get the hurt that hard? Uh, yeah. I I'm, like actually, can we do the TI battle calculator real quick? I just want to oh do it real gosh. fast and get it in there. <laughs> okay, two percent chance to win Gross. for me- for Mentech to win. Gross. That's the worst. There's thing no I've way. Heard. That, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> You're lying to us, Yin for Life. You're trolling us on air. All he ever does is mess with me on Discord, and now he's doing it live on the show. I don't know. Did I put this in wrong? No. That sounds all right. All right, all right, all right. Two cruisers and a dreadnought versus a flagship, seven infantry, and a carrier. So one, so I, yeah, so I've got one flagship, one carrier, seven infantry, and then Mentak has one dreadnought and two cruiser twos. Yep. Two percent. That's ridiculous. That's a two percent I... <laughs> chance. That's so, I can't believe that. That is, that's insane. God, screw this one. Okay, I'm upset. Screw you, Gin for life. I, I I'm upset about this one. God, this is sickening. I can't decide if I'm supposed to be mad at Yin for life because I don't know if he's Mentak or not. I yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know who Yin for Life is. I'm just gonna. T- I'm gonna make the safe choice and assume I'm supposed to be mad at Yin for Life here. Okay, that's the that's the goal here. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. That's you know, and and actually, what would be a cool play of the week policy from now on is if you have a story like this, just don't even tell a story. Just send the battle calculator. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> just send us <laughs> a screenshot of all these details, and then we have to like put the story together from there. Like that famous line from Star Wars. Specifically, tell me the odds. Thank you for listening to Space Cats Peace Turtles, and thanks to Ben Prunty for the use of his music. You can find more at benpruntymusic.com and benprunty.bandcamp.com. Pax Magnifica, Bellum Gloriosum.